Hi! My name's Kiwi. I'm Morgan. And we're previous Broad Reach instructors. I was a dive instructor down in the Caribbean. I have a background in marine biology and outdoor education. And I led some or led programs for the past five summers with Broad Reach. Um, I also have a background in marine biology and outdoor education. So most of the programs that I led had to do with biology, marine science, and ecology. Um, and today, we're going to walk you through a fish dissection. So this fish we have in front of you, uh, this is a rockfish. Now there are a lot of species of rockfish. This one is known as a grass rockfish. It was caught in a very sustainable manner. Um, what that means is no other fish was harmed as we were trying to catch this one fish. Uh, there are lots of other types of fishing methods out there. Some of them are unsustainable, which means they catch a lot of other animals that they're not trying to target. It's known as bycatch. And that bycatch is sadly not used whatsoever. Usually it's thrown overboard and it's already dead at that point. So if you're looking to buy a fish in the market, try to make sure that it is caught in a sustainable manner. Now, Kiwi's going to talk about next on how this video is going to work out. Thanks, Morgan. You're welcome. Awesome. So we are doing this video um, in hopes you can follow along this dissection at home. Um, so whether if you have a fish in front of you or if you're just following along in the dissection that we are doing, um, our hope is that by the end of this, you'll know quite a bit about the ins and outs of fish. If you have a fish in front of you, um, we're going to be doing this video, Morgan and myself will be talking about different parts of our dissection, we'll be showing you how to do it, and then you can pause the video and go ahead and do that part of the dissection, um, so you can follow along. We'll be talking about all the external anatomy of the fish, um, as well as diving into the internal anatomy. Um, you also should have all of the tools that you need for this dissection right there in your home. Um, so we're trying to make this accessible and easy for you to do. The first very important tool are small scissors. We like to use small scissors for some precise cuts. Either you can find this in like a craft kit um, or in a first aid kit. We're also going to be using large kitchen shears um, for getting through bone or some other tougher parts on our fish. Um, tweezers might come in handy. Again, just some first aid tweezers will work fine. We also have this probe. A probe is for poking things, um, checking things out. If you don't have a probe, then a pencil should work just fine. Lastly, um, we have a tape measure. This is a fabric tape measure, um, but if you want to just use a normal construction tape measure or even a ruler, that can work great as well. Um, and we're going to start off with the exterior of our fish. Morgan, take cool. it away. All right. So the first thing we're going to be using for our tools is our tape measure. And we're going to be going over our different types of measurements for our length of our fish. There are three main ones. The first one is going to be our total length. Total length measures from the very tip to tip of your fish in a straight line. This is known as the straight total length. This fish is currently, let me flip this over to our other measurements of imperial, is about 17 inches long. All right? And that is our total length. Our next type of measurement we do is called a forked length. Now that means you're measuring from the tip of the fish's head to the fin back here, our caudal fin, and sometimes some fish will have a V down here. This is in that forked area. And with the forked measurement, you're going to measure to that fork. Because we don't have one, that would be a measurement that we would skip on this fish. Our third and final measurement is known as the standard length. Uh, standard length it goes from the very tip of the head, just like all the other ones, but this time it goes right to the very, very last vertebrae of that fish. This one is right around 13 and a half inches or so. So those are our three main types of measurements for measuring your fish. So, so go ahead and measure out your fish and see what size it is. Cool. So now that you've measured your fish, we're really going to start exploring the external anatomy of this fish, um, of this rockfish. We're going to start with probably the most obvious parts that you see, these fins. Actually, before I explain the fins, I'm going to explain kind of the directionality of the fish. We'll be explaining four terms that we'll be using probably throughout our dissection. The first is dorsal. So the back side of the fish, or the top side of the fish, is what we call the dorsal side. The belly side of the fish is what we call a ventral side. The front is anterior, and the end, or the tail, is posterior. So again, that's dorsal, ventral, anterior, and posterior. Now let's get into the fins. Now fins are one of the most like unique characteristics of a fish. Um, all fish have fins, but you'll notice that all fish have different styles, shapes, a little bit of different positioning of fins, and this really tells you about the life that that fish lived. Um, but all of them 
should have about these fins. On the very back, you'll have dorsal fins. Now most fish actually have two dorsal fins, um, just like this rockfish. The first dorsal fin, actually if you pull it up, is covered in really sharp spines. That adds for a little bit of protection. Sharp spines and the roof of the mouth is not very pleasant for a predator, um, so it's a good way for it to defend itself. And the second dorsal fin is a lot, a lot softer. This dorsal fin is used mainly for stability, so your fish doesn't just spiral through the water like a football. We'll move around to the back or anti or sorry, posterior end of our fish, and you have this farthest back tail fin or caudal fin. The shape and size of the caudal will also help determine the speed at which your fish moved. Um, so the different shapes can help with propulsion. Um, this is what we call a truncated tail. Moving down to the bottom, we have our anal fin. Um, just like the dorsal fin, this helps with a little bit of stability, and the anal fin also has some spines in the very front of it to help with protection. We have a second set of fins on the underside of the fish. These fins right here are called pelvic fins. Pelvic fins can be really adapted in different types of fish, so yours might not look just like these. In fact, some fish have pelvic fins that look more like suction cups, and they can be used to climb up waterfalls. Um, so each fish has really specific fins based upon the life that it lives in its aquatic environment. And this last fin on the side, these are called pectoral fins. These pectoral fins are used mainly in maneuverability, or maneuvering through the water. So turning left, right, moving up and down, and actually even pulling out to a stop if they flare them out on the side. Some fish use their pectoral fins to almost flap or fly through the water, so they're their main source of propulsion. That's your wrasses or parrotfish, where most other fish use their tail or caudal fin as their main source of propulsion. So a quick refresher, we have two dorsal fins on the top, a caudal fin at the back, anal fin and pelvic fins on the ventral side, and on the side of them, we have our pectoral fin. Go ahead and pause the video, and if you have a fish in front of you, try to locate all of the fins on your fish and see how they are different or similar to this rockfish's fins. Cool. All right, next up, we're going to be talking about our mouth of our fish. So every time you're sticking your fingers in the mouth of a fish, be very careful. Some of them can have very, very sharp teeth. Uh, with this species of rockfish, they don't have that sharp of teeth, so it is okay to use your hands to go inside. Um, you can tell a lot about a fish's diet just by looking at their mouth. So one, obviously, is going to be the size. So the size of your mouth is going to determine how big of a prey item you can fit into your mouth and then hopefully digest and keep on swimming. So this little dude right here, uh, its teeth, let's see if we can get a nice little close-up area for you, um, it kind of has teeth that are more like sandpaper. So they're very, very rough, they're very, very tiny, it's very coarse. Um, and so this tells me right now that it's not going to be going after a uh, hard prey that could easily slip out of its mouth, so like an octopus. Uh, if you were trying to eat an octopus, you definitely would have some larger teeth to really grasp onto them because they are super hard to hold onto. So this would tell me you're probably going to be eating a lot more invertebrates. And then we can look a little farther in, you can actually get all the way down, you can see the beginning of our esophagus, which is really cool down there. Um, you have your upper part of your mouth, which is your premaxilla up here, your maxilla, which is right here, your dentary, which is right here. Um, and that's basically the main parts of it. If you're interested, you can also measure the, the gape of your fish's mouth and kind of estimate what you think might that fish be eating. So I'll just take my tape measure right here, and same kind of measurement going this way, and I've got about a three inch mouth or so, so three inches wide. and. Most fish can actually be quite aggressive with their prey, so even if an animal is only three inches wide, it could be like eight inches long, and I've seen some fish actually have their prey still sticking out of their mouth as the very front of it is getting digested in their stomach. It's really crazy. So go ahead and check out your fish's mouth. Please remember, be careful about what kind of teeth your fish has. Awesome. So hopefully you've checked out your fish's mouth, and now we're going to move on to another conspicuous part of our fish, um, another thing that we definitely don't have, and that's scales. Um, so you can find scales on other animals, not just fish, like reptiles and birds, um, but it is one pretty defining characteristic of fish. However, not all fish actually have scales. 
But the fish that do have generally one of four types of scales. The first is called placoid scales, and those are mainly your elasmobranchs. So fish like sharks, rays, and skates have placoid scales. The second are called ganoid scales, and they're more of like a, like a piece of rice shape, almost, or like a diamond. Those are going to be on your gars and surgeons and some other fish as well, or sturgeons, not surgeons. Um, your third type of scales are going to be called cycloid scales, and they're a pretty round scale, oftentimes found on reef fish. And our fourth type are called tenoid. Tenoid scales are pretty similar to the cycloid scales, but they also have little teeth on their overlapping edge. So what we're going to do is pull off one or many scales of our fish right on the table in front of us, try to figure out what type of scales it has. Um, I'm going to use my tweezers, because sometimes grabbing them with your fingers can be a little bit challenging. Um, wedge these tweezers underneath one of the scales and pull it out. So there is a great view of a scale for you. Camera two. As we can see, that this scale has some teeth on the edge, so I'm going to determine that this is a tenoid scale on the rockfish. Another cool thing is you might notice on your fish or on this rockfish that there is a faint line running down the length of its body. That is called a lateral line. And lateral lines are essentially a sixth sense for the fish. Um, within this line, there are a series of pores, and each of those pores has an incredibly sensitive filament, or kind of like a little hair in them, um, and that pore is filled with jelly and then attached to a super um, sensitive nervous system, and it actually allows fish to feel water vibration on the water all around them. So they can sense things moving or things in their environment without even having to see them. So super cool, sixth sense coming from that lateral line, running laterally along the body. If you have a fish in front of you, go ahead and pause the video, uh, pull out a scale, inspect it if you have a magnifying glass that'll make checking out that scale even easier, um, and then try to locate that lateral line along your body. Cool. Next up on our fish's anatomy is the operculum. The operculum is what covers a fish's gills. It is this little area right here. It acts as a strong shield because you want to be protecting that very vital organ. Um, so they can vary in different sizes. They can also, as you can see in this, they have little spikes too. So also be very careful when you are trying to inspect your imperculums. Now I mentioned they are protecting that vital organ of the gills. Now gills are super important because they are pulling that oxygen out of the water so this fish can breathe. Now when you're careful lifting up your operculum, you can look inside and you will see these hopefully bright red gills inside here. So I'm going to take some tweezers. I'm going to pull out a little section we have cut already and we'll talk about the three main sections you're going to be looking at here. Here you have the gill filaments. These are what are responsible for your oxygen uptake from getting it out of the water and putting it into the fish's bloodstream. Next up is this major archway you can see. This is known as the gill arch. This is what provides that important structure for those gills to work in the best possible way for them to get that oxygen to the fish's body. The third and final part is a little bit harder to see with this species. This is known as gill rakers in this little area right here. I'll give, a, I'll give you a little close up on this camera as well. These little tops of the bumps right there is what I'm talking about. Um, some fish actually uh, mostly feed on plankton and those gill rakers can help a lot with catching and collecting that little bit of plankton that's passing over their gills. Uh, some other fish have even larger gill rakers that kind of look like hooks a little bit and those are very good for defense and trying to protect some other animal getting inside their gills and damaging it. So those are your three main parts. We have our gill rakers right over here. Then you have your arch, which is the whole structure, and your gill filaments. So go ahead and pause your video and check out those really cool parts of our gills. Cool. Thanks, Morgan. You're welcome. All right, the last part of external anatomy that we really want to check out on this fish are the eyes. Um, now, fish eyes are super cool. One of the things that I think is cool is that fish are the world champion of staring contests because they have no eyelids. Um, some species of fish do have kind of eyelids, something called a nictating membrane, and it acts more of a protective cover when they're like going in for a hunt, um, oftentimes these are seen on sharks, so it's kind of a clear or opaque membrane that covers their eye, but not a true eyelid. Um, so this fish 
has no eyelids. Another thing you can learn about the eyes is, or learn about your fish is by checking out your eyes, um, the position or the size, depending on where they are on the head or what size they are, you can learn a lot about your fish, whether it's nocturnal or diurnal, so awake during the day, um, or if it's a predator or a prey, depending on where and how the eyes are positioned on the head. Um, so check out the eyes on your fish. If you're up to it, if you want, you can cut that eye out, um, open up that eye, explore the inside, see what kind of parts you can find within that eye as well. Um, fish have lenses in their eye just like we do, but our lenses within human eyes are kind of lentil or football shaped, where the lenses inside of a fish eyes are more of a perfect round sphere. Um, and so that helps, the lenses will help them focus the image underwater. So seeing underwater versus on land is pretty different, so the biology and anatomy of the eye is going to be a little bit different from a human eye. Uh, so far, we have covered our fins, scales, lateral line, operculum, gills, eye, mouth, teeth. Any other external anatomy we haven't gone over yet? No, I think we're good. I think so. So, take one final look at the external anatomy of your fish before we dive into the inside. Awesome. All right, next up is we're gonna open up our cavity, our main body cavity down here. So, what you're gonna need are your smaller scissors, these little guys right here. And you're gonna start on the ventral side of your fish. You're gonna start from the vent, which is back here, and you're gonna cut just inside of it, just a little bit like this, and start working towards the head. So slowly going. You don't, you don't want to go, go too deep into that body cavity to damage any of those organs. Uh, so try to just make a shallow cut like this. Next up, you're going to get to our pelvic fins we learned about. This has a plate of bone right here. Our little scissors can't really quite get through there, so we're going to use our kitchen shears right here. So if you have a pair, grab them. If not, if not you are going to have to kind of finagle it just a little bit. So inside, clips through that bone, and you're going to keep going up as much as you can, all the way up to almost that oral cavity. And then what I'm going to do right here is we're just slipping inside. We're going to actually cut almost through, like if you can think of it like a chin bone is right there. And that helps us to kind of create that window. So this takes a little bit of finesse. So you kind of have to check with your fingers a little bit. Make sure you're cutting those little spots. Uh, my cut right now is a little shallow, so I have to go in a little bit deeper. Be very careful of your fingers because fish, as you know, are pretty slippery. and might jump around a little bit. So here we go. A little bit here. Open it up. I'm going to cut a little bit higher to create that window. As you can see, that little membrane is holding it together. Right here. There we go. Windows coming up. Start opening up just like this. There we go. And we'll take our smaller scissors back and we'll cut a little bit of this back area so we can create a better window so we can really see what's going on inside. You can see my fish is kind of slipping around quite a bit. So you may have this and that is okay if you have that problem as well. There we go. Sweet. Take one last little bit at our kitchen shears and then we should be able to have a really nice window looking in here. We're just going through those ribs right now that protect these very, very vital organs. There we go. Oh. Sweet, look at that. So go ahead and pause your video and just be very careful and start opening up your fish. Awesome. All right. So let's start exploring the inside of our fish. Now, the important thing is we want to be a little bit meticulous about this. We don't just want to start pulling organs out haphazardly. Um, um, but you may notice right here, there is this white, shiny, almost pearly organ um, that acts, feels kind of like a balloon because that's almost exactly what it is. This organ right here is called a swim bladder. And it's an organ that is full of air. This helps provide the fish with some neutral buoyancy in the water. Now neutral buoyancy is when the fish is not floating up to the surface or sinking down to the bottom. It can kind of hover mid water and control how it's swimming in the water. Um, so this is a super important um, organ within the fish. Uh, depending on the type of fish you have, this organ may be a different size maybe inflated to a different level, depending on what depth that fish was caught at. Um, anything else you want to add about the, the swim bladder? The swim bladder can also be known as a gas bladder. So if you ever hear that term, those are synonymous with each other. Awesome.
Want to explain what this is? Whoa, yeah. This is our part of our liver. So they have a three-lobed liver. Um, livers are a very vital organ for lots of different creatures. Um, and if you know, livers are actually part of the blood filtration. So helping keep, making sure that fish is very healthy uh, and has very clean blood going through the body. Same thing happens in humans too, is our livers help to clean up our blood system and keep us very, very healthy. That's one of our main ones. You might find a little bit more as you go along to other parts of it. Then we have this next major organ right here that Kiwi's going to talk about. This giant thing is a very, very full stomach. Um, so what I'm going to do is it's a little bit of a membrane holding all these organs together. I'm going to break that membrane a little bit, being careful not to break any organs, just so we can start to separate some things. Um, towards the end of exploring the inside of the fish, we're actually going to remove the stomach, cut it open, and see what this fish has been eating, um, which is pretty cool. All right, so this is a stomach, same purpose as a stomach in your body. It starts, yeah, used for digestion and storing all the food you've just eaten. <laughs> awesome. Morgan, what's, what's all this? Oh, that's the very, very end of your intestinal tract. Same thing for a fish. This is basically your lower intestines right here. So this is slowly passing any kind of food that's already been digested in our stomach down through the body and towards our vent, which is out here, where we cut through with our scissors in the very beginning. So next up, what we're gonna try and do is start to remove these organs, uh, being very delicate to not damage them. Um, that way we can get to some other vital organs that are inside. So uh, you wanna grab your smaller scissors, kind of work away at these membranes that you saw earlier that Kiwi mentioned. Um, if your swim bladder or gas bladder is very inflated, you can also just pop it to make it a little bit easier to manage working on this fish. All right, so these, as we learned, help a lot with buoyancy. Um, and you can see how much space that took up. It was a massive amount of volume. Um, think of it just like your lungs. If your lungs can expand a massive amount of size and also retract back down. So that helps with us when we're swimming in the water for a little bit of our buoyancy too. too. Uh, so I'm going to take my scissors and start working at the very top of what looked like connected to our stomach, which would be our esophagus, and start cutting through that. So are you cutting the stomach out of the body right now, I'm again? cutting that stomach out of the body, as well as the rest of the gastrointestinal tract. I'm also going to try and remove our liver as well. That way we can kind of isolate each of these organs and really kind of check them out and learn as much as we can through our observations. The one thing that Morgan is doing as he's cutting that stomach out is he's being careful to pinch the top of that stomach. So as he's cutting it out, the stomach contents don't just spill out into the inside of the fish. Um, a, it'd be kind of interesting and messy, but B, you might lose that really cool bit of science of checking out what's on the inside. Yeah. So, kind of display this out a little bit. We've got our stomach right here that you guys learned about. You've also got your liver, and you can see there's different lobes kind of coming off that liver. Uh, and then there was the intestines we mentioned. And Kiwi might start talking about this little red organ right in there. Ah, all right. So this little red organ is actually the spleen. Um, so the spleen is a really interesting organ. It's actually a non-vital organ, um, but it does help with blood purification, especially in regards to the... Um, immune system. So it kind of works as a glorified lymphatic system. I'm um, focusing mainly on our red blood cells. So this is the spleen kind of tucked away within those intestines. Awesome. What about Morgan? These kind of weird fingery tentacle looking things. Oh yeah, you may think there might be an octopus or a squid inside. That is not. That's actually another organ that some fish have but not all. This is known as the pyloric cica. And your pyloric cica is part of the digestional tract as well. This helps out a lot with breaking down lipids. Um, so this is going to be an organ you'd find more in fish that eat meat and less algae. So if they're eating invertebrates or vertebrates, um, they're more likely to have this pyloric cica right here to help them break down their food. Cool. Awesome. What else can we find in here? I don't know. Let's explore. What do you think that is right there, Morgan? Oh, in that little area just underneath? Yeah. That is normally where we'd find our heart. So hopefully you guys can see that. We're going to take some small scissors in just a little bit, uh, and actually we can pull that heart out. I'm going to help keep this fish open, and this kiwi very carefully starts cutting away. Um, so while I'm cutting this away, Morgan, can you explain the red stuff around the heart? 
Yeah. So not just blood. Not just blood. You're correct about that. Um, fish, just like humans, also have a set of paired kidneys as well. So um, some fish, like this one, will have kidneys a little bit farther um, up towards the top of their head, just behind that swim bladder we talked about earlier. So this is one of them that you're kind of seeing right here, and the other one is tucked away underneath back in there. Awesome. And Morgan, are fish hearts very similar to human hearts? They are. They have multiple chambers just like we do, um, and they're helping to pump that oxygenated blood out through that fish's body. Awesome. Um, so we've been kind of just running through these organs. Hopefully, as we've been talking about these, you've been pausing your video and finding them on your own. If you haven't yet, please pause your video, start inspecting the inside of your fish, check out what you have. Um, fish, just like we talked about their external anatomy, that depending on the type of life that that fish lives, their external anatomy might be a little bit different. That's the same thing with the internal. It's something we like to call form to function. Um, so whether you have a freshwater fish or a saltwater fish, these organs might be a little bit different from each other. All right, Morgan, do we have any other organs to check out? Um, we're actually gonna start cutting away behind that swim bladder and see if we can check out if the kidneys continue on just behind them. So you're gonna take your smaller scissors that you guys have and see we have these membranes you guys saw earlier and just kind of slowly snip away at that membrane uh, and watch your fingers and we will see if we can find these little kidneys back here. There we go. So for this species of fish, they kind of go just a little bit farther back there, but not very much. You can see this bloodline happening throughout here, though. That's very, very close to our spine, which is really cool. Yes, you can see the vertebrae right there, right on the other side of the abdominal cavity. Awesome. Um, depending, again, especially for the kidneys, if you have a freshwater fish or a saltwater fish, these kidneys will look pretty different um, because depending on if fish live in freshwater or saltwater, that osmet osmotic regulation is going to differ, so how much salt they have within their body. Um, Morgan, I think, had a really good way of explaining. Oh yeah, so um, think about the environment your fish lives in. So with the saltwater fish, you are living in a very, very salty environment. So the concentration of salt is much higher outside of your body than inside of your body. And as you know, salt is going to kind of pull that moisture out of the body of the fish. So it's constantly getting drier and drier. So they are constantly having to uptake more and more water. Um, so that's going to be helping them a lot with their kidney function and keeping them hydrated and healthy. If you're a freshwater fish though, you are actually going to be saltier than your environment. So, and that happens is you're constantly going to be absorbing that water that you're swimming in because your salt concentration is higher. So if that happens, that fish is constantly going to have to be peeing in that water to keep its um, osmoregulation in balance. So that's really, really important for these fish. Nice. Kiwi, what'd you find there? Cool. I found one more organ right on the underside of that swim bladder, right next to that spine, and these are the gonads. Um, so right here, attached to the vent as well. Um, so gonads are either going to have egg or sperm. Morgan, what do you think is, do we have today? Uh, those to me look like sperm. So this was a male rockfish. Um, go ahead, if you can, locate the gonads on your fish, figure out if it was a female or a male. All right. Any other organs we should check out? Mm. Let's go for the stomach. Let's cut open the stomach. So the part that you have all been waiting for, what is inside of the stomach of this rock fish? Um, now I'm gonna detach this membrane a little bit more to pull it out from the other organs just a bit more so we can fully access it. Now, before you cut open the stomach of your fish, if you have a fish on the table in front of you, I want you to pause and make a hypothesis or a guess of what you might find within that stomach. Now, if you remember from the very beginning of this video or of this lesson, Morgan talked about the mouth and how the mouth of the fish will relate to the prey that that fish is eating. Um, so this fish, our rock fish, had a pretty big mouth but didn't have super large teeth. They're kind of more like barbed sandpaper pointing inward towards its mouth. So. For a guess, I don't think it's going to have any large fish or any octopus inside of this stomach. I think it might have some small invertebrate or remnants of invertebrates, um, maybe a crab, something like that. Um, I also know that some species of rockfish eat algae or seaweed as well, so there might be some pieces of seaweed. 
whether they are actually eating the seaweed or if they are going for other invertebrates living on the seaweed and they get some seaweed as well. Um, I expect to find some remnants of seaweed within the stomach. All right, so go ahead, pause, look at your stomach, um, hypothesize what you might have in it. Um, some fish might have an empty stomach or your fish like this one looks like it just ate a massive meal. All right, and now we're gonna get cutting into it. All right, so I'm going to be sticking these small scissors down the very top or the base of that esophagus. And just like you did before when you're cutting, you wanna cut just underneath the skin. As a warning, sometimes this step can get a little bit stinky. All right, and then we'll open it up. And this had a massive meal. Whoa! What That's is cute. this? What's going on there, Kiwi? I'm not sure yet, but I actually think. All right, first look, Whoa. first guess is I think that this this rockfish ate another fish. Um, if you can tell, these look like ribs. Um, what do you think so far, Morgan? Yeah, definitely looks like it ate another species <laughs> yeah. of fish in there. There's some Whoa. ribs. Oh my gosh! Did you just find a whole fish body in there? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, so a whole fish body was inside. So this... Oh, two! Two fish. Two fishes. Yeah, that's a tail. Um, and then a body. And... Oh, my goodness. It's a little hard to tell because... Oh, and there's a... Yeah, there Whoa. is a fish mouth. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, so we have a crazy. three for one deal right here with this rock fish. Um... Looking at, you can actually, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see the gill rakers within this dead fish's mouth. And looking at the size of this mouth, kind of the sh remnant shape of the body and the gill rakers, I don't know, that almost looks like a bait fish. Yeah. Or like some type of anchovy, possibly. For sure, yeah. It's a great observation. Know. Let's see if we can find a mouth on the other one, or it might be a little bit too far um, eaten. Um Yep, a little bit too far, so no more identifying features on the second fish. But this rockfish had two other fish within its body, so my hypothesis seems like it was a little bit incorrect because I didn't expect to see fish within this rockfish. I was expecting invertebrates, like a crab. I'm, wow, so science is all full of false hypotheses. Awesome, or disproven hypotheses. Um, while you're at it, if you want, you can take a look at the inside wall of the stomach. Um, generally, they have a little bit of ridges. It's not just a smooth sack. Um, awesome. Wow. We have discovered some absolutely incredible things with this rockfish. Um, anything else, Morgan? Uh, it's truly incredible. I did not expect to see that whatsoever. Oh, this is awesome. That's, that's pretty cool, actually. All right. Um, Sweet, so we have covered a whole lot of things within this dissection. Um, I hope throughout this you've been following along with your own fish um, in discovering amazing things with a different species of fish. Um, or if you didn't have access to a fish in front of you at this moment, you are able to learn all about this rockfish. Um, and you can come back to this video later once you do have a fish that has all of its guts within it um, to check out. Even if you do, see a fish, whether it's in the wild or in an aquarium or even on a video, now that you know the external anatomy of fish, so all of those fins, the eyes, the mouth, the positioning of all of those, you might be able to make some hypotheses of the type of life that that specific fish lived without even having to look at the inside of it. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so next up, we're actually gonna be going into our fish's skull. So this could be a little tricky, so be very careful, because we're gonna be using our shears again. All right, so what you're gonna be doing is, Grabbing your fish, just like so. Take your shears, you're actually gonna be cutting through one eyeball socket to the other socket to begin with. Uh, with these rockfish, uh, they are very, very tough and have very thick, thick skulls. So there's our first cut right there. You can see our second cut we're gonna start doing is we're actually gonna be trimming along the top of the skull, just at this angle right here. Um, you don't want to cut too deep here because you'll actually go into your brain, which is one of the very important organs we're going to be checking out right now. So there's one cut, as you can see, is kind of going up from that eye. Our second cut is going to be following that from the other socket right over here. Remember, try to keep it as shallow as possible. Be very careful because you might have to be used a little bit more force than what you're used to for 
a normal dissection. All right, so we've got these two parallel cuts. Now we're going to try and peel up this skull and see if we've made the correct cut to get into our brain cavity. So right now we've got an opening into it. I'm going to peel this back just a little bit like so. We'll start grabbing your tweezers and remove a little bit of that tissue that might be in the way, as you guys can see right here. And what you should find in this little area right behind the eyeballs, Let's see if we can pull it out for you guys. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, here we go, this part of this little bit cute, do you know what that is? That's its brain! That's part of the brain, we have yeah. a small, small segment, just a little bit at a time coming out. So it's very tricky to kind of pull an entire brain out, as you can see it's coming out in little tiny pieces, little by little. Uh, we might have to open up our little cut again, this little piece. Um, is also part of that brain. They're very hard to try and keep in one piece as you're doing a necropsy in this fashion. So we're going to kind of keep tinkering around and looking farther and farther into our brain cavity. We're looking for something. Ah, there it is. Very specific. All right. And this little piece right here is this hard little piece of bone that you'll find all bony fish will have them. All right. So your bony fish being any kind of rock fish, um, or any fish? Basically anything but a shark or a ray or a skate. Yeah, perfect, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll have these. These are known as otoliths. Otoliths are super, super cool. Uh, they help scientists a lot. Uh, and what they are, are hearing bones. So just like humans have hearing bones, fish have hearing bones as well. Um, your fish that have larger hearing bones, like rockfish in this species, are very slow growing. So their otoliths will be quite large. Um, and they also will use them more too. So if you are a predatorial fish that's very, very fast and it's just very, very sharp teeth, you're more relying on your sight instead of your hearing. So your otoliths for those fish would be much, much smaller. Um, so these fish that are not as fast and kind of rely on more hearing for maybe defense, for hearing things coming, will have very well-developed otoliths. Now, if you were to put this under a microscope, you would see rings. Uh, just like rings on a tree, and they actually can help you to age a fish. And just like the rings on a tree, depending on how far, how close they are, is also showing you how that fish has grown throughout its life, which is really cool to learn about. So um, these fish will have two otoliths on each side of the head. Um, if you are using your tweezers, sometimes you might hear a different sound uh, being your otoliths because they are not as dense as the full entire skull is. They're much, much smaller and just kind of float in there behind that brain. So check this out. Here's our other otolith we found inside of our rockfish's skull. So cool! Yeah, super cool. These yeah. are sick. Awesome. So in the very, very, very beginning of this lesson, Morgan started talking about sustainable fishing. Um, now something that I think is really important with sustainability is not just that you're acquiring a fish in a sustainable ma manner, but you're also using that fish once you do have it um, and using as much of it as possible. Now, depending on the type of fish that you have on your table in front of you, and also the way that your fish was stored and handled throughout this dissection or stored before the dissection, um, these fillets or this fish is totally fine to eat. Um, unless you dissected your goldfish, don't eat your goldfish. Um, so what we're going to do with this rockfish is, at the very end, we're probably going to cut these fillets off so that nice muscle underneath the skin, between the ribs. Um, um, maybe make some fish tacos out of it. Um, so it's really cool. Anytime we catch fish, we like to dissect them, do a necropsy, really figure out the insides of the, and outsides of this fish before we put that fish to use as well. Um, awesome. So we hope that you learned a lot during this dissection. We hope that you enjoy what you did and continue learning and striving for, sci for science and knowledge and kind of educating yourself and everyone around you. Anything else, Morgan? Clean up. Ooh, yeah. All right. Make sure you clean up really well. All right. As you can see, our kind of cutting board has gotten very messy with fish juices all over. Um, so make sure you do a really good job cleaning up. Uh, and I hope you had a great time learning about your fish. Awesome, you guys, and hope to see you with Broadreach sometime in the future. Later! Bye!